This is a map of the world from the 1840s, and this gray area is where the Franklin Expedition would take place. During this time, the British had a large overseas empire and an extensive trade network from Far East to Asia. One problem that plagued the British, and by extension the rest of Europe, was that there was no easy way for to reach Asia quickly. Remember, during this time there was no Panama or Suez Canal, so the only way to get there was to go entirely around Africa, through the Indian Ocean, and only then have they reached Asia. Even when they had, they would have to take the exact same path to get back to Europe. Now, you might be asking yourself, why didn't they just go around South America? Well... Due to this, the British had hoped for many years that there would be a convenient passage north of Canada that would prove to be a quick way to bring trade goods from Asia to Europe. So the Admiralty sent out many expeditions to this region over the first half of the 1800s, and they had finally drawn in most of the map of for this region, except for a 70,000 square mile area. To fill in this last piece of the puzzle, they would send what they hoped would be the last expedition to this region. Organized by Sir John Barrow, commander of the expedition was originally offered to William Edward Perry, who said no. The second choice was James Clark Ross, who also said no. Barrow's third choice was James Fitzjames, but the Admiralty said no. Barrow also considered George Back, but decided against it because he was too argumentative, as well as Francis Crozier, but Crozier was Irish, so no. Finally, Barrow settled for John Franklin to command the expedition. Two ships were allocated for this expedition. The HMS Terror, which was one of the ships that fired on Fort McHenry during the War of 1812, and is part of the reason why the lyric, Bombs Bursting in the Air, is part of the United States National Anthem, and the HMS Erebus. Command of the Erebus was given to Franklin, with Fitzjames being second in command, while command of the Terror was given to Crozier. The expedition was also suited with the most modern technology available at the time. The two ships had been fitted with locomotive engines, and both ships were stocked with tin food, which at the time was new. However, unknown to anyone at the time, the tin food had massive amounts of lead in it. With all of this preparation done, the expedition set sail from England on May 19, 1845. Shortly after, they stopped in Greenland, took on more food, and sent five men home. This would be the last time anyone saw them alive. After this point, it becomes difficult to say for sure what happened, as very little writing from the crew has survived or has been found. We know that they spent the winter of 1845 to 1846 on Beachy Island, where three men died. It's not entirely clear to tell what diseases these men died of, however due to their bodies being very well preserved, we know that they had very high levels of lead in their body at the time of death, as well as very low zinc levels. This would have extremely compromised their immune system and basically crippled their body's chances of fighting off disease. After this, the ships managed to sail south and ended up off the coast of King William Island, where they were once again frozen in for the winter of 1846 to 1847. The next bit of information we have comes from a note that was left on Victory Point on King William Island. The note is dated from May 28th, 1847, and essentially says that everything is going alright. According to the note, Franklin is still commanding, and the words all well are even written at the bottom of the note. However, the ice did not melt that summer, and the crew were forced to spend another winter in their ships. The next bit of information we have comes from Fitzjames and Crozier, who on April 25th, 1848, wrote on the sides of the first note, stating that the ships were abandoned on the 22nd and that Franklin had died June 11th, 1847. They also listed that 9 officers and 15 men had died and the crew was heading for Backfish River. After this point, all the information we have relies on Inuit stories and archaeology. We know as they begin to travel south on King William Island, the crew began to die off in large numbers. This was most likely due to a mixture of lead poisoning, low zinc levels, scurvy, and starvation. We also know that at some point, the crew split up into at least two groups. Most of the stories by Inuits follow a very similar pattern as well. Most tell of groups of white men who look generally terrible health-wise and extremely thin slowly dying off across the island. We know that from archaeology, at least some of the crew had reached mainland Canada. We also know from cuts on bones that were recovered that cannibalism did occur. The farthest south we think anyone made it was Stefan Stanley, who was the chief surgeon. We can speculate that he reached Back River as there was a piece of wood found there with his name written on it. While several rescue attempts were made, none of them succeeded. To this day, we aren't entirely sure what happened to most of the crew as most of them have not been identified. Albeit, it's safe to assume they weren't attacked by a Inuit bear god, nor were they there to harvest the power of the Inuit gods.